Hello, everyone. Hope you're all okay. Uh, thanks for coming back and watching my latest video, which today is um, the barnstorming, brilliant and um, fast, fantastic England's most successful football club, Part 10. It's the one that everyone's been talking about. And it's a brand new spanking shining video. And you guessed it, it's going to be a barnstormer today. So who are we going to be talking about today? Well, so the clubs that we're going to be talking about today are Old Etonians. And um, we'll be talking about Old Etonians, Bury, Hull City, Millwall, and Grimsby Town. So there's some nice stories there. So without further ado, let's get cracking and get straight, in, straight into it. Let's not waste any more time just um, faffing about and talking nonsense. So let's, let's crack on. Okay, so yeah, as I said earlier, thank you very much for coming along and deciding to watch my show today now today like i said we're on episode 10 of england most successful football club and um it's going to be a bit of a bomb storming episode today um anyway i hope you enjoy it and the first team that we're pulling into um with warren's team talk um team talk tour bus is Old Etonians. Okay, so here we go. We're at Old Etonians. Um, and Old Etonians, they finished 49th in Warren's Team Talk table. Um, with, yeah, they finished 49th in Warren's Team Talk table with 820 points. They won the FA Cup in 1878 and 1879. I sorry, 1878 to 79, and then 1881 to 82, and um, were runners up in 1874, 75, 1875, 76, 1880, 81, and 1882, 83. Now, Old Etonian draws its players uh, from graduates of Eton College and were members of the Football Association and played in several um, FA Cup tournaments at the end of the 19th century. Um, they were formed by Lord Kinniard, who went on in, in 1871, who went on in 1873 to represent Scotland in their sec second ever international match. Now, Old Etonians were the last amateur or true blue club to win the FA Cup on the 25th of March, 1882, when they beat Blackburn Rovers 1-0 at the Oval. Now, in all, they reached the final six times in nine years between 1875 and 1883, winning the cup on two occasions. Their record in these finals were as follows. In 1878-79, they beat Clapham Rovers 1-0 at Kennington Oval in front of 5,000 fans. In 1881-82, they beat Blackburn Rovers 1-0 again at Kennington Oval, this time in front of a crowd of 6,500. Then they were runners-up in the FA Cup in 1874-75 when they lost 2-0 to Royal Engineers, again at Kennington Oval, um, in front of a crowd of 3,000. And then, then in 1875-76, they lost 3-0 to Wanderers, again at Kennington Oval. Um, after a 1-1 draw, which also was played at um, the Kennington Oval. And then in 1880-81, they lost 3-0 to Old Carthusians 
And again, that game was played at Kennington Oval. And then in 1882-83, they lost 2-1 um, to Blackburn Olympic. Their last ever participation in the FA Cup was in the 1887-88 season and also 14 old Etonian players were capped for England either while with the club or after the players had left including one occasion where they supplied three players for an England match against Wales in 1879. Okay, so here we go. We're off again in the Warrens Team Talk bus. And this time we've gone up to the north of England and we're in the fishing town of Grimsby. Um, Grimsby uh, finished 48th in Warrens Team Talk table. Um, with 832 points. Now, I managed to see Grimsby play in the late, late 80s when they played at Bruce Hall in a titanic promotion battle with South End United, um, which was an interesting occurrence. Um, but like I say, I'll, I'll, talk to you that, I'll talk to you about that on another occasion because it was, was quite a funny turnout. Anyway, so Grimsby Town <clears throat> are the only club in Lincolnshire to have achieved two interesting facts. One, that they played in the top flight of English football. And two, they reached FA, an FA Cup semi-final. And they've done this on two separate occasions. And they've also spent more time in the English games first and second tiers and any other club from Lincolnshire. Grimsby's most, most famous former managers are Bill Shankly, who went on to guide Liverpool to three league titles, two FA Cups and a UEFA Cup triumph. And also Lauren Menemy, who after securing promotion, to the then third division in 1972, moved to Southampton where he won the FA Cup in 1976. Anyway, so let's start off in more detail with this story. In 1892-93, they finished fourth in tier two and they followed this up by finishing second in um in tier two, twice in 1895-96 and 1896-97, but missed out on promotion on each occasion. Then in 1921-22, they finished third in tier three and then went on to win the tier three title in 1925-26 by one point from Bradford Park Avenue. Then in 1928-29, they finished second in Tier 2 and were promoted to Tier 1. In 1933-34, they secured the Tier 2 title and were promoted to Tier 1. They then followed an 18-year period with no success until 1951-52, when they finished second in Tier 3 but were not promoted. And then four years later, 1955-56, they won the third division North Tier 3 title and were promoted to Tier 2. In 1959-60, they finished fourth in Tier 3 and followed this up in 61-62 season by finishing second in Tier 3 and were promoted back to the second tier. In 1971-72, they won the, the fourth division tier four title and were promoted back to tier three. In 1978-79, they finished second in tier four when three teams, when the three teams who finished second, third and fourth 
all finished on 61 points and were separated by goal difference, but all three clubs were promoted. Then the very next season, in 1979-80, the first backing Tier 3, they won the Tier 3 title to get promoted back to Tier 2. Then in 1988, they appointed Alan Bluffley, Buckley as manager for his first of three spells in charge of the club between 1988 and 2008. He turned out to be the club's most successful manager in the club's history. In 1989-1990, the season where I attended their promotion battle with Southend United at Roots Hall, they won automatic promotion back to Tier 3 after they finished second in Tier 4. Then the very next season, the club secured a third place finish in Tier 3 in 1990-91 and won automatic promotion back to Tier 2. In 1997-98, they secured a third place finish in Tier 3 and won promotion and won promotion through the playoffs when they beat Northampton Town 1-0 in the playoff final at Wembley Stadium. In 1998, Alan Buckley guided them to an EFL trophy victory when they beat Bournemouth 2-1 in the final at Wembley Stadium in front of a crowd of 62,000 with, and they won the game under the golden goal rule. Then eight years later in 2005-06, they secured a fourth place finish in tier, tier four, but did not win promotion because unfortunately they lost 1-0 to Cheltenham Town in the player final at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. In 2008, Alan Buckley again took Grimsby to an EFL trophy final, but on this occasion they lost that 2-0 to Milton Keynes Don in the final. So yeah, that's the story of Grimsby Town. Now, a good friend of mine um, told me that they have a quite a fierce rivalry with Norwich Fish and Norwich City. Um, now, I'm not quite sure why that is, but he seemed to think it was something to do with the fishing industry, but I really don't know. Um, yeah, so that's Grimsby Town. Okay, so here we go. Um, we're back on the Warrens Team Talk tour bus, and this time the windows have all got reinforced steel on them um, as we're heading back to um, South London and we're going to the home of Millwall Football Club. Um, I have been to Millwall Football Club before, um, and it, uh, my two visits there have been, well, three visits actually, Two of the visits that I had there were absolutely terrifying. Anyway, but like I said, as I, as I said to you before with Grimsby, I'll tell you about that uh, on another occasion. Now, Millwall, um, they finished 47th in my list and secured 860 points. Um, Millwall were formed as Millwall Rovers in 1885 and um, the club has retained its name despite having last played in the Millwall area of the Isle of Dogs um, in 1910. The Lions, as they are nicknamed, were enjoy invited to join the Football League in 1920 for the start of the 1920-21 season and then between 1924 and 27 Millwall con secured three consecutive third place finishes in tier three before going on to win the third division south tier three title in 1927-28 and in doing so 
managed to score an English record of 87 league game uh, league goals at home, a record which still stands to this day. In the 1925-26 season, Millwall enjoyed 11 consecutive clean sheets, a football league record, which they hold jointly with York City and Reading. Now, between in the 1937-38 season, the club again won the Tier 3 title by finishing one point above Bristol City in third place and one promotion to the second tier of English football. In 1951-52, they finished fourth in Tier 3, but did not win promotion. And then the very next season, in 52-53, they secured a second place finish in Tier 3. But unfortunately, they missed out on promotion on this occasion as well, because again, they lost out to Bristol Rovers, who won the title by finishing two points ahead of Millwall. Now, the next bit of success for the club came in the league, then came in the 1961-62 season, when they won the Tier 4 title and were promoted to Tier 3. And they then followed this up in season 1964-65 by finishing second in Tier 4 and were promoted back to Tier 3. The next season, 1965-66, they finished second in Tier 3 and won promotion up to Tier 2. In the 1971-72 season, the Lions finished third in Tier 2, but sadly for them, they missed out on promotion to Tier 1 by one point to Birmingham City. And then, just a short, few short years later, in 1975-76 season, they finished third in Tier 3 and were promoted into Tier 2. In 1984-85, the club secured a second place finish in Tier 3 after going unbeaten at home in the league for the season and securing 90 points. And they were promoted to Tier 2 that season. They then have, then, they then, after winning the Tier 2 title in 1987-88, one promotion to Tier 1 and enjoyed a brief spell in Tier 1 until 1990 and achieved their highest ever league finish of 10th place in the first division, Tier 1. In, 1988, 80, in the 1988-89 season, the Lions then secured a third place finish in Tier 2 in the 1993-94 season, but did not win promotion to Tier 1 as they lost 5-1 on aggregate to Derby County in the playoff semi-finals. Then in 2000-2001, they won the Tier 3 title with a points haul of 93 and a goal difference of plus 54. The <clears throat> Millwall then followed this up by reaching the 2004 FA Cup final when they lost 3-0 to Manchester United at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff in front of a crowd of 71,000 and then qualified the next season for Europe for the first time in their history. Um, when they played in the UEFA Cup and they lost 4-2 on aggregate to a Hungarian team, Ferenc Chavos, in the first round of the tournament. Then, nine years later, in 2009-10, they secured a third place finish in Tier 3 and secured promotion back to Tier 2 after beating Swindon Town 1-0 
in the playoff final. Then, after this, in 2015-16 season, they finished fourth in Tier 3 and then went on to miss out on promotion to Tier 2 after losing 3-1 to Barnsley in the playoff final. Next, the very next season, in 2016-17, the, the club made up for the previous season's disappointment by finishing sixth in Tier 3 and then winning, prom winning promotion through the playoffs by beating Bradford City 1-0 in the playoff final. So amongst... So that, that's really it, really, except to say amongst well-known celebrities who are Millwall supporters are Daniel Day-Lewis, Andy Forden and Danny Baker. So that's the story of Millwall Football Club. Now, I just want to say that they do, the club does have a very bad reputation because of a tiny minority of its supporters, but I've always found their supporters to be very passionate about their club and very vociferous in their support of their team. Um, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the reputation does go before them a wee bit, but like I say, they're a great club and um, their supporters are very passionate. So, yeah, that's, that's Millwall's story. Okay, so we're back on the Warrens Team Talk bus and we uh, managed to survive our little trip to Millwall. Um, God bless them. Anyway, so we're now moving northwards. We're going up to the Humber now and we're going to visit Hull City, um, another city that has town or city, whatever you want to call it, that's got strong links to the fishing industry. Anyway, so let's find out more about Hull City. So Hull City finished 46th in the Warrens Team Talk table, um, where they managed to accumulate 890 points. Now, Hull City or Hull City Association Football Club, to give them their proper name, um, or the Tigers, as they are known, were formed in 1904. And an interesting fact about Hull City is that along with Grimsby Town, they were the only two professional teams which had official permission to like play league football on Christmas Day. Now, this is because of the demands of the fishing industry um, in both these towns and cities, but that tradition has now disappeared following the dramatic reduction of their trawler fleets in recent years. So, also operating in a town which has such a strong rugby league presence did prove to be quite difficult for Hull City initially and because they were unable to apply um, for membership of the Football League when they were first formed. They initially only played friendlies, um, but Hull City were finally admitted into the Football League, second division, tier two, for the 1905-1906 season. And then in their first ever league game, Hull managed to defeat Barnsley 4-1 at home and finished the season in fifth place. So that's no mean achievement, really, is it? Anyway, in 1908-1909 season, Hull City achieved a fourth place finish in Tier 2, were, but were not promoted. And then the following season, 1909-1910, they finished third in Tier 2, but again missed out on promotion to Tier 1, but this time on goal average to Oldham Athletic, after finishing level on points with them. Then in 1932-33, the 
Hull City enjoyed an unbeaten home league season and were promoted to Tier 2 as Tier 3 champions. They and then in the 1937-38 season, they finished third in the third division north, but did not get promoted. Then, following the uh, end of the Second World War, in the first season after the war, in 1948-49, the Tigers won the third division north tier three title and were promoted to tier two. And during this season, they only suffered one of way defeat all season. In the 1958-59 season, they were promoted to Tier 2 after finishing second in that season, when they missed out on winning the title to Plymouth Argyle by one point. In 1964-65, they finished fourth in Tier 3, but missed out on promotion back to Tier 2 after finishing one point behind Bristol Rovers, so Bristol City, who occupied the final promotion place uh, in second. This disappointment was softened though somewhat the next season in the 1960, in 1965-66 when the Tigers won the Tier 3 title to win promotion back to Tier 2. Then in 1982-83, the disappointment of two successive relegations into Tier 4 was eased when the Tigers secured a second place finish in Tier 4 and were promoted to Tier 3. Then in 1983-84, they finished fourth in Tier 3, but missed out on promotion to Tier 2 to Sheffield United by the slimmest of margins, seemingly um, by goals scored, as both clubs had the same number of points and the same goal difference. So they separated them by the number of goals that each club scored. Also that season, they were runners-up to Bournemouth in the EFL Trophy when they lost 2-1 to the Cherries. Then the very next season, in 1984-85, they secured a third-place finish in Tier 3 and won promotion to Tier 2. Then in 2003-04, 2003-2004, the club finished second in Tier 4 and won automatic promotion to Tier 3. And then they followed this up the very next season in 2004-2005 by finishing second in Tier 3 and automatic and won automatic promotion to Tier 2. In 2007-8, they achieved promotion to the top flight of English football for the very first time in their history by winning the championship tier two playoff final when they defeated Bristol City 1-0 at Wembley Stadium. They then followed this up by finishing second in tier two in 2012-13 and winning automatic, automatic promotion back to the top flight of English football again. The highest ever league finish came in 2013-14, when they finished 16th in the table, a season in which they also reached the FA Cup final. On the 17th of May 2014, Hull City competed in their first ever FA Cup final when they lost 3-2 after extra time to Arsenal a, in a game which they raced to a 2-0 lead in the first 10 minutes of the game. And were it not for a goal line clearance by Arsenal defender Kieran Gibbs, they could have gone into a 3-0 lead. 
in the first 10 minutes rather than the 2-0 one. So I would imagine it would have been very difficult for Arsenal to come back from being 3-0 down. They managed to do it from 2-0 down, but I think 3-0 down would have been too much. Before the game, um, before the game started that day, Hull City knew that they were already guaranteed a place in the next season's Europa League, which would be the first, which would be their first ever appearance in European club football, um, as Arsenal had finished fourth in the Premier League that season and qualified for the Champions League playoff round. In the 2014-15 season, Hull eventually lost out on away goals to Belgian club Lockeren in the final qualifying round before the group stage of the Europa League. In then in 2015-16, they showed great, great bounce back ability after being relegated again to win promotion back to tier one after finishing fourth in Tier 2 and winning their playoff final by defeating Sheffield Wednesday 1-0 at Wembley Stadium. So everyone, that's um, the whole City story. So let's get back on the Warrens team book talk bus and go and visit our next club. Okay, so we're back on the Warrens team talk bus and this time we're going to go and visit Berry. Now, Berry finished 14th in the Warrens team talk table and managed to accumulate 933 points. Um, now, Berry, known as the Shakers, who since 1885 played their home games at Gig Lane which is one of the world's oldest football, oldest football grounds. The club were formed in 1885 and they were elected in the, into the Football League in 1894. However, heartbreakingly, because of financial problems, the club were expelled from the, um, the EFL in August 2019. And then in November 2020, they were placed into administration. Now, um, having seen a club that I used to follow around, Maidstone United, go through all this nonsense uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s, um, I just want to offer my sincerest condolences to everyone connected to Bury Football Club, um, the fans, the, everyone employed by the club, the owners, um, the players, everyone, and I hope with all my heart that they're able to rise again and come back stronger than ever, because I'm sure you will if you just don't ever, ever, ever give up the fight for your club, because believe you me, it's worth fighting for. So best of luck to you, and I hope you get back that glorious club into your lives again. Anyway, so moving on, let's let's talk about their, their story up until those awful events. Um, Berry won the second division tier two title in 1894-95, and this qualified them to a test match against Liverpool, who had finished the previous their, their season bottom of the first division, tier one. And it was a game which Berry won nil, won one nil which gave them promotion to the first division tier one of the English Football League. The club were then successful in winning the FA Cup twice in three years. In 1899-1900, they beat Southampton 4-0, which was played at Crystal Palace with a crowd of 68,000 people. And then in 1902, Three, they beat Derby County 6-0 again in a game that was played at Crystal Palace and this time it's in front of a crowd of over 63,000 people. 
Their 6 0 win over Derby County remains a record winning margin for an FA Cup final, equaled only once when Manchester City beat Watford in the 2019 final by the same um, margin of victory. They were then successful in securing promotion again in the 1923-24 season when they finished second on goal, on goal average in front of Derby County. Then, in 1925-26, they finished fourth in the first division, Tier 1. And then in 1932-33, they finished fourth in Tier 2 and third in 1936-37, but missed out on promotion on both occasions. In the 1957-58 season, they finished in fourth in Tier 3, before winning promotion as champions of the third division, Tier 3, under the stewardship of Dave Russell in 1960-61. Now, the following season, in 1967-68, they finished second in Tier 3 and were promoted to Tier 2. Three years later, in 1973-74, Berry then finished fourth in Tier 4 and were promoted to Tier 3, and then stayed there until 1979-80 season. In 1984-85, they finished fourth in Tier 4 and were promoted back to Tier 3. Um, then in 1994-95, Berry, Berry finished fourth in Tier 4 but lost 2-0 to Chesterfield in the playoff final. So missed out on promotion on that occasion. The following season, 1995-96, Stan Temen took over as manager and during his reign the club finished third in tier four in 1995-96 and won automatic promotion to tier three and they then followed this up the next season in 1996-97 by winning the tier three title to win automatic promotion to tier two. Then in 2008-2009, Berry, Berry finished fourth in Tier 4, but missed out on promotion to Tier 3 when they lost to Shrewsbury Town in the playoff final, playoff semi-final, sorry. And then two years later, in the 2010-2011 season, they won automatic promotion out of League 2, Tier 4, by finishing second. They were then twice promoted in 2014-15 when they finished third in Tier 4 and then 2018-19 when they finished second in Tier 4. Um, and then, unfortunately, that's when um, all these financial issues came home to roost for them. Um, and the end of 2020 they went into administration so like i said at the beginning of their story i sincerely hope that they're able to come back really soon and they come back stronger and they do much they come back stronger than ever and are able to um give their fans a lot of joy and happiness once again so best of luck to Barry, and my heart goes out to all of you who have a connection with that club. Okay, so that's all the clubs that we're going to talk about today. Uh, the Warrens Team Talk bus has taken us back to the depot, and all that needs to happen now is when I've said goodbye to you and thank you all and whatever, that um, I give the bus a good wash down and give it some more petrol and uh, um, connect it up so that it can have a nice rest and sleep. Because he's worked hard today, bless him, um, with all that travelling around the country and um, 
dodging all the uh, bricks and bottles that got thrown at us when we go, went down to Millwall. Only joking, Millwall fans, all right? <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, so thanks again for coming to watch my video. I hope you enjoyed this week's video and thanks so much for for watching. I am really, really grateful for your support. Um, if you're new here, um, if you're new to my channel, please make sure that you subscribe and also um, please make sure that you click on the thumbs up button, thumb, the thumbs up button at the bottom of the video and if you've got any comments that you want to make about what I've told you about any of these clubs, please make sure you leave it in the comments section and also yeah don't forget to pass it on to any friends or colleagues or whatever that you know that might be interested in seeing it um because it would be a great help to me to if i can get more people watching these videos anyway um like i say thanks very much for coming by and watching this i hope that you're managing to stay safe and healthy and in this crazy lockdown times that we've got here in the UK um, and all these different variants of the virus that are coming up, coming out. Um, anyway, so just to look forward till next week, um, um, I'll be looking at, um, I'll be looking at a number of clubs again next week and the teams that I'll be looking at are Brighton and Hove Albion, Crystal Palace, Luton Town, Barnsley and Watford. So this video, that video will be out next Saturday morning hopefully if everything goes well and so I hope you like I say that you've enjoyed it and um Please, like I say, click on the like button and um, subscribe if you're new to my channel. And um, have a great day and also have a great week. And, oh, yeah, don't forget to click the notification bell because that way you'll get notified, hopefully, fingers crossed, I should say, by YouTube every time that I upload a video. Um, so that should guarantee that you never miss any of the shows that I put out. Um, anyway, yeah, so thanks again and take care and I'll look forward to seeing you all um, next week. And till then, stay safe and remember, keep talking.